Section 6.3, sampling distribution and estimators. So what you have here is, you know, when you have a large populations and when you take a sample from different area of these populations, equal sample, equal numbers. So N has to be the same. Like if you take in 200 samples from one corner of the city, you gotta take 200 from each corners. All right, so that could be, we want to take sample of family income or a number of males and stuff like that. So when you do that, when you take these samples and they all have equal numbers, then you measure their, let's say you measure their means And when you take mean of each group, and then you take the average of all three, the statisticians prove that when you do that, the average of this is equal to mean of population that we don't know, okay? So let's say if there is one large city and we know that mean of the family income is like 60,000, and we want to find what that is, and we want to find the range for it, then you go ahead and take equal sample from various areas of, pop, you know, this uh, populations and find the mean for each one. When you take the average of all, this number must kind of match that number. And we do this by showing the examples here. So, when we have done this, when we, we've done a study, we have came up with these conclusions that here, um, it happened that proportions, mean and variance of samples are equal to populations, but we couldn't find median range and standard deviation to be equal. So these are bias estimated means they, they don't they are not equal, but these three proportion mean variance are equal. So let's say we, we want to try something really small, otherwise it would be very complicated to do the problems. Let's say we here in these problems, a friend of author has three children with age four, five, and nine, and let's consider that to be your population. Let's say you have a population, there are only three numbers in it. And if you have just three numbers in it, how would you calculate mean, standard deviations, and all this? Look, if you have only three numbers and we ask you to calculate mean, Mean is you take all three of them and divide by three. So that would be your mean of populations. What's the median? What number is exactly in the middle? Five, that's what the median is. What is range? Range is maximum minus the minimum. So these are all just for these three numbers. So again, let's assume your population has only three numbers in it. How would I calculate the variance and a standard deviation of populations. We are using this formula. On this table here, when we ask you to find standard deviations, it's not very clear here, but this is on chapter five, we study this. This is how to find the standard deviations, right? And you understand the difference of the variance and the standard deviation. A standard deviation is a school root of the variance. So when you calculate the variance, all you need to do is take a screw of that number and that would be your standard deviation. So when we ask you to find a standard deviation of 
population or standard addition of these three numbers, first you have to find a variance. To find a variance in the formula, I need to find sum of x to px. There are only three numbers, x, 4, 5, and 9. You raise each number to power of 2. That would be your x2. What is the probability of, when, when, when there are three numbers, what's the, when you pull one number out, what's the probability of that number be 4, 1 out of 3? When you pull one out of three numbers, what's the probability of that number is 5? Oh, again, it's 1 over 3 and one over three for nine. So all they have the same problem. Each number has the same chance of occurring or selection. So then we do all this and we find the variance. The variance of population is 14 over three or 4.7, okay? Now again, if you want to find the standard deviation, standard deviation is always equal to radical or under the radical is the variance. So that would be 2.17. Now, out of these three numbers, what is proportion of, uh, how many of these three are uh, odd numbers? Two of them, right? So if we ask you to find proportion of the odd numbers, proportion of odd numbers is two out of three. So these three numbers, proportion of odd is two out of three. Two out of three of the numbers are odd. So we already calculate proportions, the standard deviations, variance, range, median, and mean for populations. Now, now we look at these tables here, and uh, now we want to do the samples. What you have here is this, if you have three numbers, four and five, nine, and you want to take a sample. You want to take a sample of two, n equal two. How many choices do you have? What is the variation when you take two out of three numbers, okay? If the first number, let's say you pull one of these three and you get four, and you go for the second time, you put that back because it's with, re with replacement. When you go for the second time, you also get four. So one of the possibilities is four and four. If the first number is four, the second number could be five or could be nine. So this is three possibilities right here. Let's say when you pull one out of three, your number is five. Since you put that back, the second time when you pull also, you might get five. So the second option is five, 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 four, five, nine. And the same thing, if, you, if when you pull one of these three out, if the first number is nine and you put that back, the second one would be nine and nine, nine and four, nine and five. So there are nine possibilities of two out of three numbers. Now, so these are the samples, okay? These are samples of the two. Then for each sample, what is the median? What's the number exactly in the middle of these two? Four and four is eight divided by two is four. What's the number exactly in the middle of four and five? You take the average, right? Four plus five is nine divided by two, four point five and so. What's the median between like five and four? The same thing. So you calculate the median for each sample. What is the range of the sample? Range is maximum minus minimum. Four minus four is zero. Five minus four is one. 9 minus, so that's how to calculate the range for the samples. How do I calculate the mean of the sample? Mean is just you take the average of these two numbers. How do I calculate the variance of samples? To calculate the variance of the samples, then we show all those in this page. Where do we get this formula? It's this one. You see, a standard deviations of the sample, you know, S, S is a standard deviation of the samples. Now, you understand S to power of two is the variance. Variance is what you have under the radical here. 
what you have under the radical is your variance of the sample. So for us to calculate variance of the sample, we get to do that for every single samples. One of the samples we had was what? Four and four, right? Okay, we want to find the variance of this sample, four or four. Um, you put X2, you take everything here, is zero. I had a sample of four and five. How do I find the variance of that? How do I find the variance of five and nine and so on? So these are the variance for each sample. You see, sample calculations. Because when you calculate the variance, mean, range, standard deviation, you use a different formula for samples versus populations. All right, so now you put everything here. See, these are all the calculation for the sample, like proportion of the odd numbers. When you have four and four, what is the proportion of odd here? There is no odd, zero. You have these two numbers, four and five. You understand that four and five, five is odd. What's the proportion of odd among this, uh, between these two numbers? One out of two. If both of them are odd, what's the probability of odd here? Two out of two, and so on, okay? So now, right after we finished all everything for the sample, we take average of all the median, average of all the range, all the means, and you come up with these values. These are for the samples, okay? Now we need to compare these values with the population, like mean of samples versus mean of population, median of the samples versus median of populations. See, we calculate here, we did everything for population, remember? See how you have for the samples, you have six, and for population, you have six? Medians are not the same. This is six, that is five. Range are not the same. Variance, variance of the samples is 4.7, but look, variance of population also is 4.7. Proportion of the odd numbers of the sample is two over three. Proportion of here, odd numbers of population also is two over three. So when we do this example, I summarize everything here. Samples, but which ones are equal, which one are not. The ones that are not equal, I circle them. So, Based on this example, then we come up with this conclusion that proportion of the population is always equal to proportion of the samples. So when you take some samples from the large population and find mean of all, proportion of all those that happen to be equal to proportion of population. Mean of population is equal to mean of all the samples. Variance of population is equal to variance of all samples, but the other three are not. They are not equal. And we show that by using the calculations. Okay.